Section 19.3 is all about trying to prove that two lines are parallel. And in 19.2, we learned that if two lines are parallel, we had different angle relationships. We had same side interior angles were supplementary, alternate interior angles are congruent, and corresponding angles are congruent. Now we're taking a look at something called a converse. And a converse actually means we're going to turn a statement around. And so the first statement for a same side interior angles postulate says that if two lines uh, are parallel, then same side interior angles are supplementary. And so what that means is angle three plus angle six would have to be supplementary. That would mean they would add up to 180 and angle four and angle five would have to add up to 180. Well, we're going to take and write the converse of this statement. The converse is to take this statement and turn it around. And it's going to say this. If two same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines must be parallel. So I've already written out the alternate interior angles theorem and the corresponding angles theorem. And all those say is if we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. And if two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles are congruent. And pay attention to the wording in the if and the then, because a converse just turns this around. If alternate interior angles are congruent, then two lines are parallel. And so that's how the converse is written. If uh, alternate interior angles are congruent, so we just took this then statement and made it an if statement. If alternate interior angles are congruent, then two lines are parallel. And the converse of the corresponding angles theorem, we're just going to put this statement first. If corresponding angles are congruent, then two lines are parallel. So if we can show that either same side interior angles add up to 180, or if we can show that alternate interior angles or corresponding angles are going to be equal in measure, then we can prove that two lines must be parallel. So here's an example using a tile, and the tile is in the shape of a quadrilateral. It looks like it could be a parallelogram or a rhombus, if you could prove these lines are parallel. And you got two opposite sides. We got a side uh, that comes down like this. And imagine if we were laying tiles, the tiles might have to lay in this manner. And then there's a tile here and this tile here. And there might be another tile in here. And if this is 120 and this is 120, then that makes this right here 120. And this would also be 60. And so we can make the determination that these lines are going to be parallel. One because these two angles right here are same side interior angles, the 60 and the 120, just like the 60 and the 120. That adds up to 180. So we could say, since the same side interior angles are supplementary, the lines are parallel. We could also look at the 120 here and the 120 here. Those are corresponding angles. And we could say, since corresponding angles are congruent, the lines must be parallel. And we can also look at alternate interior angles because if this was a 60 degree angle, I could assume that this would be another piece of a tile at 60 degrees. And since this angle is equal to this angle, those are alternate interior angles, and those must also be parallel. 
So in this example, we're going to simply explain why the lines are parallel if I know uh, that all the tiles are going to use this basic shape right here of 120 and 60 degree angles. So this angle 2 looks like it's in this place right here where it's 120. So this angle is 120 and this angle 1 is in the same place right here. So it's also 120 and these two angles, we just have to decide the relationship. Those are alternate. If this is my transversal right here, this is the transversal. These are alternate interior angles. So since, if I'm going to use evidence, since angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 at 120 degrees and they are alternate interior angles, they're congruent. So the lines must be parallel. And we are essentially using the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. Now, if I come over here and look at angle one and angle two, it looks like I'm looking at 60 and 120. And 60 plus 120 uh, equals 180, and that makes them supplementary. So since angle one and angle two are supplementary, and they are same side interior angles, then the two lines must be parallel. And that's essentially using the converse of the same side interior angles postulate. So I'm going to answer these last couple questions of the lesson without writing. I'll let you write them out. Um, and the key here is to be able to explain our reasoning, to explain our thinking. And we want to decide if line L is parallel to line M if I were given that piece of information. And I'm going to go highlight it. If angle 3 is congruent to angle 5, let's take a look at what that means. If angle 3 is, con is congruent to angle 5, that means that alternate interior angles would be congruent. And we have... A, a converse of the alternate interior angles theorem that says if and this is what you could write down since angle 3 is equal to angle 5 and they are alternate interior angles then line L must be parallel to line M now we're still trying to decide if line L is parallel to line M and we're trying to come up with some proof and we need to decide what the angle relationships are and let's take a look this one's asking me about angle 4 and angle 8 and if I take a look at 4, 4 is uh, that angle there and 8 is here. And you need to know what kind of angles those are. Those are corresponding angles. They're in the exact same place, lower left-hand side. And they need to be congruent for lines to be parallel. And then they tell me X is 15. So if you want to write this down and scribble this down on your paper, we need to know what 15 plus 20 is. And then we also need to know what 2 times 15 plus 5 is, and 2 times 15 is 30, plus 5 is 35 degrees, and 15 plus 20 is 35 degrees. And so sure enough, angle 4 and angle 8 are both 35 degrees. And so we would say, since corresponding angles, uh, since corresponding angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. That is the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. Angle 3 and angle 6. Well, if angle 3 and angle 6 add up to 180, then we can write. Since same side interior angles are supplementary, the lines must be parallel. Last time, looking at angle 2 and angle 6. Well, that is the exact same thing that we just got through looking at in part B. Uh, which is the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. If angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, they're corresponding. And since corresponding angles are congruent, the lines must be parallel.